Takara. That's how it's pronounced. Believe it or not, I was hoping for something a bit more uh, extravagant. Sato Vinyl Industries, later to become Takara Corporation Limited in 1966, was a Japanese toy company founded in 1955 by Yasuta Sato from Fukushima. The Takara motto was Playing is Culture, and the name Takara is a girl's name of Japanese origin meaning treasure or jewel. <laughs> From schoolgirl inspired outfits, fearsome fake nails, and blinged out cell phones, high school girls have always been the front runners of obnoxious fashion trends. The post war generation was no exception and jumped out of the gates in 1960 with Kinabori Winky, an inflatable vinyl doll that hung on your arm and winked at passers by with its lenticular eyes. Lovingly christened by the media as Dako Chan, loosely translated as Little Huggums, this innocent black baby rode the arms of schoolgirls across the nation to define a generation. The hottest thing to hit that summer, it was an overnight success and demand far outstripped supply. Storefronts were hammered by waves of customers waiting to buy redemption tickets, which gave them the privilege to line up again later for a chance to buy the actual doll from Takara. Nearly 2.5 million units were moved in just six months. Everyone was in love with Dako-chan. Dako-chan was a recognisable logo of the Takara brand. In the 1980s, the company was criticised for using the mascot that was seen as a gollywog-like character. Takara eventually replaced the mascot with 21st century colourful Dako-chan, which had enough features from the original mascot, but divested the traits which brought criticism. For example, the new mascot was not always coloured black, maybe missing the point somewhat. Takara produced highly successful brands such as the Microman and Diaclone toys, which were both developed and later picked up by Hasbro to become the Transformers brand we know today. Also, Licker-chan, a dress-up doll series introduced in Japan on July 4th, 1967, enjoying the same kind of popularity in Japan as the Barbie series does in the United States, selling over 50 million units as of 2007. They also had the license for Star Wars in the 70s and early 80s. On 13th of May 2005, Takara and Tomy announced their merger. It became effective on 1st of March 2006. In English, the official name of the merged company is Tomy Corporation Limited, while in Japan the legal company name is KK Takara Tomy. In deciding upon the merged company's new name, Takara was used for its international brand recognition and Tomy was used because it was a trusted brand of infant and preschool products in Japan. Yasuta Sato passed away on February 26, 2019, at the age of 94, dubbed the King of Toys. Sato set up the Japan Toy Culture Foundation as a government affiliate in March 1986 with its mission to promote and raise awareness about Japan-made toys. He earned a Doctorate of Engineering from Yamagata University in 2010. Apart from the action figures, which are you know, the, the normal size 3.75 inch action figures, everything else has a little bit of bonkersness to it. Um, now, I think we should start with you, Mr. Spoons, because uh, I was looking around the internet, found this really nice website all about Diecast, written by some bloke called Andrew Norton. Uh, really interesting. Uh, but I think you've got a bit of a head start on us with this stuff. I'm not a great language person. Any vintage Star Wars stuff that is in a different language, I just find intriguing and interesting. You know, really, probably really boring if you're from those countries. It just says the same, but in your own language. The sort of the Kenner-esque die-cast ships for the uh, for Takari, you just get the Land Speeder, the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. But each of those is pretty much, is, apart from one, one big difference, which I'll ask you to guess in a minute, but they're pretty much identical to the Kenner cards, except that the names of the ships are written in Japanese script. And that, that to me, is really interesting. Otherwise, they're identical, apart from one thing on the back of the cards. Now, do any of you know what that is? No idea. So on the on the back of the diecast cards, they're really trying to pitch the the kid size stuff. So the, the blasters, the Rebel, Rebel Blaster, the Stormtrooper Blaster, and the lightsabers. Now, on the back of all the 12-back diecast cards, the lightsaber is yellow. But for some reason... On the Takara ones, they've changed it to red, and I've never understood that. So anyone Ooh, got any, got I've any got, I tell you what, can I add to that? Now, I was going to cover this a bit later, but might as well talk about it now. The electric toothbrush also has a similar thing. So in the, the – exactly, is that the same card? Is that the same cartoon on the back? But also, obviously all in Japanese language. 
but the you get two toothbrushes with it in the kenner one uh, the english one or should we say english language one you get a yellow and blue one i think it is but the yellow one has disappeared and replaced with a red one for the japanese one so there must be something to do with the color yellow yeah how okay. interesting mr spoons yeah, that, that's that's more than coincidence isn't it yeah exactly that's some that's a design thing something about yellow they don't like yellow maybe it's something I don't know. Maybe, just like, maybe it's just accuracy, as there are no yellow lightsabers in the films. Perhaps they just love red. Japanese flag's got a big red circle in the middle, hasn't it? Perhaps, perhaps red is a is, is a lucky colour or a favourite colour. Under Japan. the rising sun, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but then the sun is also yellow, so it's, it's very. <laughs> <laughs> that is strange, but that is that is the whole thing. There must be there must be a reason for that. There must be a reason why Japanese. I'm going to Google it while you keep going. But anyway, yeah, so that so that sort of step down the traditional Kenner diecast path has led me well, it led me down two lines really. So I, I do really like Tie Fighters. So started collecting Takara Keshigomu rubbers. They, I mean, they're not erasers; they are sort of rubber toys. So I think rubbers is a better name for them than than erasers. But we'll come on to them in, in a little bit. But also any other japanese die car stuff and it and and takara is such a sort of limited star wars run so late 70s before uh, popey gets the license and so the it's a really good way of getting uh, a die cast line in general a good way of getting 12 backs cheap but also a good way of getting other star wars items um from that era so the next next ones that I started collecting were the i call them the rocket firing range and there's a, there's a bit of debate about what's included in these but the 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 obvious ones are c3po which i mean i think i've all i bought these all this year so i've talked about them on all, all the shows so i just i just whizzed through them but c3po he's about I think, six or seven inches high and shoots rockets from the middle of his uh, chest and whilst doing a bit more research for this show i've, I've found out that there's um there's packaging variations so you get the the boxes i mean the boxes are really nice looking anyway but you get them with a with a, a sticker this st sticker which is um like the lp sticker or lp logo on on kenner's you get it with a sticker or without and i think the without is a is a bit rarer but you get c3po you get darth vader who doesn't fire rockets but he has chewbacca's bowcaster that shoots glow in the dark bolts so it's kind of shoot a shooting thing rocket firing that's what i call him also comes with a lightsaber and a cape and you talked earlier about this sort of this the robotic look of everything now he looks like a japanese robot more than darth vader really big long legs very mechanical looking more you know i know they say he's more machine than man these days the takara darth vader looks very much like a machine there's that kind of four items advertised on the back of these packaging the the other one is the uh, is a is an X-wing a completely different scale and where the, the the guns are on the wings, you press a button and they shoot off. So this this rocket firing thing again, and that's really nice, tiny little R2D2 that slots in the back. They all come with stands, so they 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 look great on display. And lastly is R2D2, and there are loads of R2D2s. Now the one that I feel goes best with this run is the slide viewing rocket firing one so you, you look you look through his back you click a button and you can see various scenes from star wars then you open a flap on his back and there's uh three rocket launchers that that come out you know that's just that's just a great toy but the you'll get a bit of debate there's also the just the standard rocket firing r2d2 who doesn't have a, a slide viewer some people believe that that sort of belongs to this and that one comes in a couple of different types of packaging and i've certainly seen the i mean i, I quite like the, the black i like star wars packaging to look the same it's it's the black look of star wars that really sets it apart from from all the other toys of that time the, the so you get the the rocket firing r2 in the in the black packaging but you also get it in a kind of a a window box this white and blue box which doesn't appeal to me as much doesn't doesn't fit that look so much but i've seen those for sale quite often uh farthest from and things i wonder if they're a little bit more common maybe i'll go down that route one day um there's also the the battery powered bump and go r2 so you basically turn him on I remember having cars like this as a kid. Yeah. You turn him on, it hits hits the kitchen cupboards and turns around and goes goes somewhere else. Um, and that you know that's that's a great one. And then a little bit like the Kenner or the Palator or the Harbour, we've got the remote control 
R2. In fact, I've got got one of those myself. Of course, the Takara one fires discs as well, so the eight inch disc firing R2D2. So they're just just great great items. R2D2 was a gadgety kind of droid, you know, all sorts of things coming out, and they seem to. I know it wasn't accurate, but they, they seem to get the, the sense of R2-D2 more than we did. I mean, what was the best we had? A, a remote control one, one that kind of had a, you could take obviously the you know, the 12-inch one, you, you had the Death Star plans. And that's about it. We These had, guys. We had, the, we had the talking one as well, oh, but yeah, they didn't right, yeah. they didn't do didn't do anything. I, as a kid, you know, I wasn't into, you know, you kind of make up your own games as well. I wasn't yeah. reenacting the film and I hadn't even seen Star Wars till after I'd seen Empire Strikes Back. So who knows what R2 did in the first film, but didn't stop me playing with him. And having, you know, shooting discs or rockets would have been would have been a great feature. Anything, because you know, he's got all these panels on him, and as we've seen in the you know episode one and two and whatever, he could fly and you know shoot things out of all sorts. And, and even in Empire Strikes Back, he's got a few bit you know little gadgets coming out of his head. You know, this this is a proper Swiss Army knife of robots, isn't it? So anything goes really. Anything could pop out of R two. So Japanese, I think the Japanese did a better job. I really do. I think they did a great job on coming up with something a little bit different on R two D two. That's what he was there for to do crazy things Toy, toys yeah toys are meant to be played with and the more that you can do with them the more play value they have and that, and that seems to be certainly takara's um, model uh, but on the on the flip side <laughs> the takara zetka which is another die cast line and these are probably most similar to the little die cast key rings uh, in fact you, i think they did a range of them for the the power of the force 2 that kind of era you could get little metallic key rings of, of various star wars things they look very similar to that but obviously a lot lot rarer and they do very little so for those you get the land speed of the tie fighter and the x-wing and they the, the, the tie and the x-wing come with little stands and then you get a c-3po and r2d2 and these these are tiny little things r2d2 the tie and the x-wing are quite common you see you see a lot of those the packaging actually doesn't look to me, it doesn't look 70s. If it, if I saw these in the shop today, they wouldn't look out of place. It's quite different styling to a lot of the other vintage packaging. Still still black, though, so I, I do like that look. But the Landspeeder and C-3PO are, are very rare on the on the Zetka, and I don't think I've ever seen those carded. I've seen opened ones, but not not sealed carded. And so they're 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 a nice little run those ones. It gives an idea of prices of these sort of things. What 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 can you what can you find them for if you can find them? Because I'm well, sure they, I've seen the Zetka stuff quite a lot. I think especially place at Father's Run. I'm sure I've seen them. Yeah, uh, no, they 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 range a bit because people chance around. But really, I think it's sort of 150 dollars is kind of the most you should be paying for a fairly nice you know, C8 card for R2D2 tie in the X-wing. You, you can still get them there. You see them on eBay for. 250 and you know that's, that's not outrageous but they tend to sit there a little bit longer the uh, i've no idea what you'd pay for a sealed land speeder or c3po because it's just just not there so the but there's um a loose land speeder and a loose uh, 3po on ebay at the moment they've been there a long time they're around about the 500 price which says to me that's probably more than they're worth because no one's buying them at that um you know maybe I don't know if a carded one somewhere between that and maybe seven eight hundred. I really I really don't know. Um, but the 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 bigger items, the rocket fire items, they're great value. They are. They most of them are around you know complete in a box in in nice condition, around two hundred. They do go to oh, go up a little bit. I saw um, the X wing. There's one on eBay at the moment. I think it's missing one of its of its blasters, but it's. In, in in a nice looking box, the polystyrene inserts about 150 pounds. You know that's a that's a good good deal and not bad. Keep, yeah, you keep your eyes peeled. And I think there's a loose loose X-wing someone's selling for 70 quid or so. So they're not you know compared to the Palatoys or the you know, the Bacanos or other other countries um, limited issues. Takara doesn't seem to have to have quite the same attraction. And I've noticed that. I know. Uh, Jason might be speaking about this later, but even with the the Kenner style figures on the Takara cards for twelve backs, they're a they're a reasonable way of getting a twelve back. I think cheaper than um, some other countries. So I don't know what why that is. Uh, to me, that you know, they're, 
I love them. You know, if they were if they were more expensive, I'd be prepared to. But also the wood kits, which don't seem very desirable at all. So you mentioned that before in the in the red paper clip, and these are very similar. For those of you who've who've got kids or bought these for nephews and nieces and whatever, you, you see these wooden models of dinosaurs or um maybe planes and things you sort of just slot all the bits of wood together and they make a 3d model well takara were doing those in the 70s and you can get the tie x-wing and land speeder you know they're the, they're the three standard star wars ships you can also get an r2d2 and i've not seen one of those for sale so i don't have that one but um they're not they're not very desirable i think i i i uh probably overpaid for uh, the ones i bought recently um but there's a one of the japanese collectors uh, toru komuro um he actually gave me my my first tie which is why i'm quite happy to pass that favor on with a with a second tie um as part of any anything on the on the podcast so and that's kind of started my liking of those kits because they're, they're great again they're great looking items great packaging and it, and it fits in with the rest of the collection and then, um, yeah, we've talked about Keshi Gomu before. These are these um, little rubber toys that you got in, um, I think it's pronounced Gashapon, uh, which is like gumball machines, or you see them in service stations in Britain now with sort of those plastic balls in a machine and the kid puts in a pound and gets a, a bit of rubber tat out of it, keeps them happy for five minutes. Uh, they, you could also get them in these these blind bags. The packaging for the blind bags was quite nice. But these, yeah. Ooh, I, ha- I hate blind bags. The, the, ba- <laughs> the bane of modern collecting is. They are, was, yeah. Oh, no. Let's do a blind bag, a blind box uh, range of toys. Oh, get over yourselves! I'm not spending <laughs> eighty quid for one item. But, you know, no, well, I, the the beauty of these. Uh, Takara Keshigomu blind bags, Pete. You have the chance to win another bag. <laughs> you can get a voucher in the bag to win another bag. Uh, but if you're, you know, they were it's pocket money stuff, isn't it? And you get a few yeah. in the bag as well. And um, and there's and I, again, I hadn't realised this before. There's there's a few people making these in Japan at the times. So there's Maruka and Morinaga. But I found out that Takara made their rubbers as well. So basically, Takara made them, and then the others sold them so takara's logo appeared there and actually the 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 sculpts for maruka and morinaga were actually better than the ones that takara is selling out they uh the zakara ones are a bit chunkier um a bit less detail i i, I prefer them actually they, they they to me they look better but yeah they're not as accurate but they do have one of the best and, and rarest ones out there which is a, a bantha with a tuscan raider riding on it you can also get um a jewback now they're, they're really really hard to find but loads and loads of different colors i think 15 or 16 colors so and, and I've, um, andy takara who I, I get a few of mine from he's put together a run of just green ones of these so it doesn't matter which which brand what sort of price are you paying for those sort of things again it's um in fact, one there was uh, one of the Maruka X wings I was watching on eBay this week, which was for sale for fourteen pounds and didn't sell. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, um, but I think if you if you buy them off people in the know, you pay a bit more than that. I think the most I've paid for one is probably like forty quid or something like that for a slightly rarer one. The again, the Takara ones tend to go for a bit more money. Maruka, I think Andy regularly has sets of four X wings or four Y wings for eighty quid or something like that. You know, they're, they're quite reasonable and they're not quite pocket money. But in terms of um, Star Wars collectibles, there's not a lot that's that's at that price level these days, is there? No, not really. I mean, they're, they're kind of they're beautiful little things. I think uh, I had a big collection of those. They look fantastic. They had all the colours. Where it does get expensive, have you seen the the header cards from these gumball machines? So it's basically a backing card with Star Wars on. And then a kind of random selection of the rubber toys and a die cast R2 coin holder. Oh, okay. And there was one of, I think Andy was selling that as well. I think he had it out for two and a half, um, well, yeah, $2,500. And it sold pretty quickly. I don't know if that was <laughs> what was paid for. And it was you know, a bit dog eared around the side. Really nice item. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's where the the prices go. But yeah, these 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 rubbers are uh, are fairly common, whatever, whatever they are. Um, it, but it's potentially what colour you want. It. So I saw, uh, I can't remember who it was, a post on Facebook recently. Someone had finally got the black Y wing to complete their run of 
16 colored Y wings. So, you know, that, that was, they were struggling to get a black one, but not necessarily a, a Y wing in, in itself. Crikey. I was actually I was going back on the wood kits very, very briefly. Not a lot of uh, Star Wars collectibles in wood, believe it or not. There's a, uh, there's my Amidala chair in wood. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, there was not a lot really. Uh, isn't there the laptops. office? Isn't there like the kids' bedroom furniture? Yeah, things like that. But there's there's not a lot of like collectible things, you know. Easy pencils, Pete. Pencils. Pen- <laughs> yeah, pencils, schmencils. Got lead in them. Terrible. Can't eat them. But yeah, not 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 a big uh, range of wood Star Wars toys. If you have a wood Star Wars toy, uh, we have forgotten. Let us know. Richard, you like a large item with several inches of girth, don't you? So tell us about the large action figures. Well, yeah, Pete. Um, I, I am astounded that I didn't know that in Japan they released two of the 12-inch action figures. I didn't realise they had. Even though I've seen Lee Bullock's presentation um, at Father's Farm, I completely must have missed this. So Luke and Leah were released in the 12-inch line, large-size action figures. From what I can see from reading the SWC and other places, uh, it looks as though they were just the Kenner um, box items, but it had the nameplate changed. Um, But, you know, I, I, I just... I, I just love Japanese writing. I just love the whole style of it. And I think those, uh, uh, the 12 inch looking layer boxes are looking really nice. But obviously, they weren't the only large size action figures. I've seen these in Vectors a few times now, the 8 inch action figures. And um, we've talked about these before. Yeah. And um, the Stormtrooper one in particular, because obviously, we've talked about the misspelled Stormtrooper on the package. Um, absolutely brilliant. So there were four of these, but also variants to collect as well with spelling mistakes on. So you have Chewbacca, Darth Vader, C-3PO, and the Stoom Tuba. But also the variants are Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and C-3PO were also misprinted with Storm Tuba written on them as well. So they're quite hard to get. Um, SWC nails the description, perhaps best known for their odd, almost cheesy appearances. They are great, great action figures. Uh, Eight-inch lines, uh, it's a bit of an unusual size, yeah. uh, but I do like it. I, I think it has more playability than the 12-inch line. Well, um, it's, it was the Mego size, wasn't it? So it was yeah. the same, same size as Mego, mm-hmm. everything, which they've just re-released again. Uh, you know, I think they're absolutely great. Um, yes, fair enough. You know, they are just scaled-up renditions of a three and three-quarter-inch Stormtrooper figure, for example, the Stormtrooper one was. Interesting note, like they made using a pantograph. That would be incredibly tough um, using a pantograph to scale up a three and three quarter inch action figure. Um, but obviously the Japanese are incredibly skilled at that kind of stuff. I don't think I've seen any without cracked bubbles when I think about it. I think all the ones at Bechters I've seen have had uh, issues with the bubbles. But uh, if anybody's collecting those lines, you know, by all means, I'd love to see a group shot of them. Um, mm. They're fantastic items. Love them. I do love the word Stormtrooper. Sounds like a, a Geordie version of Stormtrooper. Excellent. Right, Jason, tell us all about Takara, the figure range, the, the 12 backs. Right, well, for my source of information, I've gone old school. I've gone to RebelScom, so www.rebelscom.com slash Japan SW History hyphen Japan dot ASP dot ASP page. There's an article that was written back in the day there by a chap called Toro Komuru, and it's called Japanese Star Wars History 101. And I'm just going to focus on the bit about the figures and this is what he has to say about the the figure range he says takara introduced the first line of star wars toys in japan uh the original figures were three and three quarter inches in size the packaging was the same as the american versions except for a sticker about two inches in size on the front of the card which came in a number of different variations first they printed a trademark tm with english descriptions and then changed it to an ST circle, which is the seal of the Japanese company that inspects the safety of the merchandise. Um, I do have a number of these card backs, and I've, on, on C3PO, I have both versions of that sticker. So the, I've got a picture with them both side by side that you'll be able to see on the enhanced YouTube podcast for that. Um Darth Vader's character was even displayed with an all-white background card as opposed to the orange background that was used everywhere else. So, yeah, so behind the bubble, the you know, you have the standard color for the figure. And for, for some really weird v- v- reason, there's a version of Darth Vader with, which has got a white card in the background, and that's a very desirable uh, card to get. I don't have that as a uh, card back yet. Um, so that's quite unusual for Takara. Even though the major difference between the Takara and Canada lines was the packaging, three of the actual figures did differ from the American versions, and these were 
Darth Vader, C-3PO, and Stormtrooper. They used a different mold designed by Takara, was used for all three characters, and they had a screw located on the back of the figure which held them together. So, yeah, they've all got a massive screw hole on the back with a screw in holding the, holding the figure together. Uh, and it says, even though there were 12 characters advertised on the back of the card, the Jawa and Death Squad Commander were never released by Takara. And those are the ones which on Palatoy arrived on, on 12 back, arrived really late in the range. And obviously in, on the Japanese versions, it was too late to actually make it in, make it on to be one of their cards. Uh, also, he says there's no country of origin printed on the back of the cards. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, the other thing I'm going to talk talk about. Um, oh, Jason, J- Jason, just before you go on, yep. what what sort of prices are you going to pay? I mean, I, I had a quick look on Star Wars Tracker for Takara cards. I, had a, I looked at the Vader one. Uh, there, there weren't a lot, but they seemed sort of like you know about just under a thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds, kind of upwards really for a, a carded one. Um, what would you pay for a loose card? Because I mean, I think those cards look great with that fit that sticker on. I think they look absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I got I got a lot of my a lot of my cards I got back in the day. So I mean, when I was picking these things up, I'd get these for you know under under a hundred pounds. I mean, I don't know what they go for now, but a lot of foreign cards for the in, for the twelve back, you know, initial run of figures, they all seem to be around the two hundred quid plus mark these days. But um, they're very nice cards, and they do come up as mint on card quite often, so it's quite easy to pick pick these things up. And the little sticker is, is, is quite nice. And there are, as, as I say, there are a couple of different variations of that. Mm. The other thing that I do want to talk about, which is the same kind of size, is the thing called the Walking Wind-Up R2-D2 Marchant Aramonta, it says in the front of the card. And it's, a little, <laughs> it's a little wind-up R2-T2 that came on a card. And I'm, I am after one of these cards, and I don't have it yet. Star Wars no R2-D2. <laughs> Toru Kamuru says about this is Kenner also produced an R2D2 figure which uh, used a sticker to provide R2's details, but Takara decided to give R2 a Japanese touch and provide him with actual detailing in its physical structure. You can tell this is written by somebody who's Japanese. At this time, the R2-D2 toy was rumoured as George Lucas' personal favourite and was ordered and distributed to all employees of Lucasfilm. And it comes in a little baggie, again with the SD logo that featured on the sticker that goes on the front of the Canada 12 back cards. And in, in Canada, it actually came on a card that says Walking Wind-Up R2 Marchant R Remonta and is an actual cartridge figure with a bubble. The Takara version just comes in that little baggie. But it's a lovely little thing, and it means the, the, the Japanese say this was called the Noko Noko R2. Noko Noko is the Japanese term used to describe movements of short and heavy objects, and better known in the States as the Winder Party D2, but they called it the Noko Noko, so there you go. That's a cracking little item, that is. Let's look on eBay, actually, some of the prices for this, yeah, they're huge. You know, there was, there was one, I think it was a graded one, I think, for about £400. Yeah, they want 400 quid for it in the United States. Bit of a shame to it graded. It, it doesn't look right. I've, I've got one, and yeah, and you do need to wind it up and have a go if you own one, and you can't do that if it's, uh, if it's yeah. graded. Yeah, you don't want things graded, goodness sake. The Japanese ingenuity makes something a bit different. R2 did walk. Let's make it properly war. Star Wars no R2 D2 o Super Control. Super Control to a John Passoju no Koto. Pahla Mutsuno Action. Takara no Super Control R2 D2. Right, Jason, lovely little round up there. Nice one. Uh, so on those card backs, which uh, I'm sure you'll be looking up for now and losing your money. Preston, let's come to you because I don't know why. I'm sure we've looked at these before. But it never resonated with the name Takara, I didn't realise. But the, you're going to have a little look at the puzzle boxes, which are absolutely fantastic. They are, aren't they? Yeah, you've asked me to look at jigsaw puzzles, and Takara yeah. did a lot of jigsaw puzzles, more so than any other market, I think. That's crazy. Three different sizes. So there were micro puzzles, which were 60 pieces. The big puzzles, 500 pieces. But the ones I'm focusing on today are what they call the mini puzzles, which Ooh. are 108 pieces pieces and uh, yet yeah, these are great aren't they there were eight in total these were released in 77 78 each boxed 
puzzle contains a jigsaw puzzle and a packet of collecting cards. Very tough set to complete, I understand. The cards and the puzzles are very, very hard to find. So, uh, as I say, eight in total. And some great graphics on these. So, uh, <laughs> first one is the, uh, the award ceremony uh, in the throne room there at the end of the movie. You've then got C-3PO and R2-D2 in the control room on the Death Star. You've got C-3PO and R2-D2 on Tatooine. You've got an image, um, this is a, 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 a bit of an odd one, so you've got a composite image of Luke with his land speeder <laughs> and the, the droids one. and the escape pod. I don't know quite how they get it all looks, those into the same image. but It looks amazing because you've got a planet in the side, you've got some ship on the background, I can't quite see what it is. That escape pod is half of the image. It's absolutely massive. And, you know, R2 and, like, you know, c 3 oh, yeah, we came in that ship. That's our ship. And it's just, it's amazing. That's it just pro- awesome. Must be the same size as the blockade runner, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> Enormous. huge. Oh, my word. What a great image that is. And it's well done as well, considering it's been cut out and pl- placed on there. That is really well. That's, that's some real nice artistry there. It is. That's a Photoshop before Photoshop was invented, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, that image. So the, the other ones that we've got, we've got R2 on Tatooine. We've got the Stormtroopers in the Death Star Corridor. We've got the Stormtroopers in Mos Eisley stopping the land speeder. And then we've got the X-Wings in the hangar on Yavin 4. So that's the eight. So as I say, each of these, you've got a jigsaw puzzle with 108 pieces. You've then got a set of cards and these cards, they came in small white envelopes inside the puzzle boxes. There were five cards in each envelope, and each is about two and a half by three and three quarter inches, so a little bit bigger um, than the standard trading cards that we all know about. There weren't necessarily different cards in each different puzzle. Sometimes there were the same five um, that you could get in in, uh, in different puzzle boxes. But they were always together in numerical order in batches of five. There's a variety of different cards. There's a set of 40 to collect in total so you've got images from throughout the movie from start to finish each box also had inside a much larger black card about four inches by six inches and that had the star wars logo on uh, in white text all the cards um, this is going back to the 40 smaller cards now they've all got japanese writing on the back and numbers but no artwork on the backs the other thing that was inside these puzzle boxes which intrigued me on the pictures i've seen and uh, again we'll throw this up on the social media and on the youtube um channel but uh, yeah, there's there's a little bag full of white powder what and I thought, what, what is this? Do they start them young in Japan? What's going on here? That's shocking. What's, what's look, what is going on? It looks for all the world like something out of Breaking Bad. It really does. But uh, <laughs> no, it is a small plastic packet of crystals. And apparently the idea is that you mix these crystals with water. It's not sounding better, Andy, already. You're sounding worse. And then you spread them over the final completed jigsaw puzzle and it solidifies. It's like a glue or a glaze and it keeps the jigsaw puzzle permanently together for display. What? How about that? I've never, ever heard of that before. I, no, that is mad. Again, that, there's a Japanese innovation for you. They were doing it before everybody <laughs> else and uh, clearly everybody else hasn't caught up yet. Well, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I did a sad story. My nephew loves the Titanic. Right. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the impending doom. He just loves the whole thing. about. They're obsessed with it at his school as well. During the first lockdown, I did him a nice little jigsaw of a Titanic and stuck it together. I would have loved a little bag of crystal glue stuff. Instead, I you know, had to use tape and glue and all sorts. And did a reasonable job, I've got to say. Quite proud of myself. Like, framed it up for him. He loved it. Thought it was fantastic. You know, He saw, saw the effort went into it. Where was my little bag? They don't do that now. What happens if you change your mind and want to take it part again? Well, you have to cut it up, wouldn't you? I've got all the kind of uh, UK vintage jigsaws, and I have the ones which feature the the action figures. I have them framed on the wall and just pressed inside the you know the display things where you have a kind of cork back and then just a see through cover on it, and then all the clips in place, and that's enough to kind of hold the, the whole thing together. I tell you what, some some of those images from the cards. I've got to say, there's a couple of corkers in there. Number 14. I don't know what it is with CPO's eyes. So it's Ben helping CPO. He's had his arm chopped off by the Tuscans. Luke's got his arm in his hand. And 3PO's eyes are staring quite menacingly into the camera. Uh, with his head tilted, it's really quite sinister. I think um, yours would be if you just fell off a cliff, Pete. Well, yeah, exactly. With my arm fall off. And I think also number 13 took me on as well, which was, it was a really cracking image of Moss Eisley. 
And uh, it's got a very small bantha, or I'm assuming it's a bantha, next to that sort of space pod thing, which is fantastic, outside the, well, I'm assuming it's a canteen or, or a dwelling. Some really nice images, actually. That, that Again, real interesting selection of images. So, you know, yeah, worth going Pete, through. But... Pete, Pete, do you do you not know your Star Wars? That's not a bantha, that's a gerba. Well, whatever it is, it looks rubbish. And they've just put it on a, on a small pony, let's face it. Space cow, there you go. Space shrew, I think. Right! That's a nice, again, a cracking little roundup, Andy. I love the powdered drug bag thing that they found. I asked you also to have a look at some items, just, you know, because there's lots of stuff. Um, pick up a few oddities, if you wish. I've also I've already mentioned the toothbrush, which is exactly the same in, in, the, in the States as it is in Japan, but all Japanese. Uh, the cartoon on the back is is absolutely fantastic. Basically, R2 and, and C3PO, R2 has grown arms, by the way, Arthur's got a lovely arm now. He can hold a toothbrush in and clean his teeth. They're chim chamming about, you know, how clean your teeth. There's a whole uh, re- data readout in the cartoon from R2D2 telling you. It's quite detailed on how to clean your teeth, on to go around the back, on the top, on the side, um, and to make yourself look really nice with your nice, white, shiny teeth. And uh, um, obviously, they've used it. They're a bit confused about using it, and Chewbacca comes in, uses it, and uh, there's lots of Chewbacca noises and nonsense. But uh, yeah, the back of the card allows you to send off for more. Uh, there's a little address thing on there, same in Japan as well. You can send off for more tooth heads. And as I already mentioned, you get different coloured toothbrushes. But uh, yeah, worth checking that out. We're obviously put on social media, fantastic. The only difference is, you know, I said Japanese writing, and obviously rather than Kenner, you've got Takara logo, the little racist logo on there and the the seal of approval but yeah a, a real nice little item the other item i wanted to mention which is uh it's kind of a transforming x-wing they called it a transforming x-wing now i'm, I'm going to say it's not technically a transforming x-wing even though that they call it that so it's a really nice kind of like you know x-wing fighter uh probably about sort of, sort of small kit size you'd get like an npc kit kind of size but what you can do is take out the wings, move them around, create different ships using them. So, yes, it is kind of transforming. But, yeah, you can pull out the pieces and make a real wonderful variety So, um, of different spacecrafts. Again, Japanese come up with a bit different. Some of the designs are absolutely fantastic. But, obviously, you know, it was in that kind of era of transforming toys. Uh, but, yeah, a real beautiful kit. The box is fantastic. It's got its own design on the Star Wars racetrack, all kind of like very zazzy. It shows all the different types of ways you can transform your X-Wing on there. But uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's an absolute corker. I really, really think that's one of the most interesting and ingenuitive Star Wars toys out there, really. Any, any comments on that transforming X-Wing? I think that's, that's brilliant. It is brilliant. It is brilliant. I, I would like one. But it's just, again, it's just so much play value in there, isn't it? It's, uh, in fact, I'm quite tempted to... Uh, to get myself one of these that's also got the rocket firing guns on the wings you can see little triggers to shoot yeah. off the blasters and you get a little, little blue r2 and a little little blue luke in there it's quite cute in its own way sort of sitting there the picture on the front of the box is exactly the same as the die cast oh, okay yeah just with but with the the extra shapes that you can make on the side someone's had a right shot at him there on that front of that box you know they completely missed obviously don't know where it's coming from. They, <laughs> they've had a go, but I do love that that that's that different racetrack design. You know, where it's like, you know, real zeddy looking thing. It's quite distracting actually from the actual the word Star Wars, but yeah, it is cool. And it's big it, as well, isn't it? It's the size of three and three quarter inch ship. Yeah, it's big. It's it's just I just love that. I think that's absolutely brilliant. You know, it's got the holes on the sides so you can pull things out and stick them back in again and all do all sorts of it. Just but it, but it looked like it came up as a model kit because it had the sprues you had to take it off. So it was kind of, I guess it was just, you know, the way they manufactured it and it was cheap. But So, Pete, if you had that as a kid, would you have just played with it in X-Wing form or would you have made the other the other things out of it? It's a little bit like a Lego yeah. ship, isn't it? You, you buy a Lego kit to make a certain thing and then it gives you like the, the early millennium falcons i think you made the millennium falcon and it gave you a design to make something else i'd have probably had it in blast apart action so we could, <laughs> right. you know, so, so a wing could get taken out by you know uh, an enemy ship i know some of the designs are quite cool some are a bit cheesy the one with the three prongs up uh the one that looks like a landing ship is pretty cool with the with the wings on the side yeah uh, 
I, that, that's pretty cool. I'd probably do that for like a landing kind of scene in my brain. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably done a lot of uh, things being knocked off because you, know, you, you could pull it apart. But like the X-Wing, you know, you could take off the guns and the uh, compartment and stuff. And I'd have probably had that. And I thought the R2 comes out on this one as well. So, you know, you could be flung out. You're doing your Empire Strikes Back scene. And you could uh, fling him out into a pool of dirt. It'd be quite fun. But yeah, love that. Guys, uh, anyone else? Spoons, what else have you got for us? Well, I, I've picked the inflatable... <laughs> it's just Straight away, one. inflatable. The, That's all I need inflate, to know. It's inflatable. Inflatable X-Wing torpedo. Brilliant. And I've picked it because it's it's just a bit rubbish. It, how they you know how they tie that in with X-wing? That's got to be a reused toy from another line. Essentially, it does have an X at the very back of it, but it's like the Goodyear blimp. Um, just a torpedo shape. You inflate it. You throw it. That's that's the toy here. It's just yeah, not very good. In fact, it reminds me of the Marvel comic giveaways for issue one and two with the uh, the cardboard X-wing and Tie Fighter there that don't really look like what they're meant to be because otherwise they wouldn't fly. It's space, that's, isn't it? So it all yeah. Again, look at look at the design of the Star Wars on the front, on the side of it. It's got that Z shape yeah, on it again. But the box is is kind of more traditional Kenner, isn't it? Could you get a Kenner one of these as well? I don't know. I'm not aware of one. Never heard of that before. I but it's it. got but it's got the same X wing image as on the um, the other Takara X wing boxes. So that that kind of one on its side blasting down which seems to be typical for these takara things but i mean it's a again it's an interesting item i'm not sure that would be on my list to buy i must say no but it is one of those oddities that you know that's that you know sums up the japanese kind of like yeah anything goes let's just <laughs> whack this on the side of it we got four million we made for another line it didn't sell let's stick styles on it see if we can get rid of them but one of the one of the other things i've i really liked was the r2d2 Pencil sharp, sharp. No, I was wondering if uh, Andy was going to mention this because the, uh, you know, with the love of stationery, it reminds me a little bit of the Death Star pencil sharpener from Helix. It comes on a little blister card. I don't. Did the did the Death Star come like that? Or was it just was it just loose? Death Star was loose. They came in store display boxes, but they were they, they were loose in there. It's only the modern 40th anniversary ones that were carded. That reminded me of those those 40th ones because it's sort of a carded pencil sharpener, but it's just a little That's little cool. RTD to them. We were talking last week about, or the last week, so last month or months before about taking things in pencil cases to school i could imagine having an r2d2 pencil sharpener and, and playing with him on my desk when the teacher wasn't looking and then shoot some darts at someone's face it'd be great the one. <laughs> yeah yeah does this yeah does this one do anything yeah, the other shoot one? shoot shavings at your face you know <laughs> fantastic I, I i do love anything with that i mean that is just a great classic design isn't it especially with the japanese writing on it, it just looks brilliant it looks it looks old school it says anything about the style of japanese writing it's almost don't know, any kind of almost like a Star Warsy font as well, the way they've rounded off some of the uh, yeah their own text. So they've 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 been respectful to the design of Star Wars, haven't they? And they have, and there's they do um a couple of well a few badges in similar packaging, and they're quite reasonably priced actually. So, um, but very very similar packaging. There's um there's, uh, there's like pin badges, diecast pin badges. Um, and then sort of the more traditional button badge, you know, like the Darth Vader lives. But the packaging is very simple. The items aren't expensive. Just great collectibles. A lot of this stuff, would, if you found it loose, it's so similar to um, modern items. Yeah. I think you, at first glance, you, you'd you struggle to know what it was, actually, whether it's the, the pin badges, whether it's the Zetka toys, whether it's the, the 90s Kenner die cast stuff. They all look very similar, I think, out of the packaging. Let's move on to Jason. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he talks about the action figure display bin because he didn't mention it in his roundup. Well, I lost out on one of those on a on a deal or no deal on Facebook. I was quite annoyed. How much? How much is that sort of thing going for? That was it was it was relatively cheap again in Display World. So really, I bid it up to three hundred. Is that all? Yeah, and then. Um, and he said, uh, maybe even 305, I think 305. And he said, no deal. And I said, I'm out, Matt Fox. So he put in a bid at 310. And the guy went, yeah, OK, then. And it was, I'm sure it's only because I said I'm out at 305. <laughs> he was just trying to see where we went. Yeah, for the sake of a fiver, it didn't seem much. But yeah, it's gone, <laughs> gone to a good home, so I'm not. I mean, just to describe what it looks like, it, 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 I think it's, I mean, I know, 
I think I've seen this before, but I can't remember. But it, uh, that is, sounds a bargain. It's basically a nice big square black box uh, that can take two rows of or two uh, columns of Star Wars figures, you know, uh, 12 backs. It's got the, the pictures of the characters on the front um, in kind of like in a kind of grid format. And the box obviously folds in on itself to create the display. And it's got that Star Wars that we've just talked about with the, Z, the Zeddy looking Takara. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's their trademark almost, which obviously would not be allowed to do today to have your own kind of styling on there. Yeah, with, with a nice little movie scene. Well, sort of little movie scenes. It just looks, again, another wonderful bit of Japanese ingenuity. Uh, the way it folds out, it just looks brilliant. I mean, you could. And, and there, was, there was question when this was for sale. There's actually questions over what it was because it doesn't immediately look like um, a bin <laughs> for carded figures, does it? It looks, looks like something else. This one didn't have the header, to be fair, so it wasn't okay. the, the complete thing. At, but still, even even if you just have it, you know, without the header on it, it looks just as cool because that yeah, no, I, big yeah. black box with the logo on. The way they've done the the grid of. Uh, faces it's just brilliant 300 quid and he should have put that extra 20 quid in i think well i thought it seemed he was like looking for 500 or something not, not well yeah extra, i mean not an extra fiver you know that was, I, I would have thought some of that would have gone for a couple of grand you know no like, it's it's a bit like the die cast bins as well it's just it's just they're just not they're not in the same league as kenner bins and i wonder whether you know a little bit, little bit like we saw with tri logo stuff Back in the day, can give it away. Everyone wanted Kenner, and it seems to me that that kind of ancillary collectibles, the the displays, is very much an American bias on that. And I wonder as as the years go, or, or American and figure bias. And I wonder as the years go by, people will, will get more interest in the in the foreign stuff, even if they're not from that country. Because for me, that's the attraction of it. It, it looks different and interesting. Right, it's not it's not a nostalgia thing. I don't remember. I don't even remember yeah. displays in Britain. Um, it's just they they interest me from a design point of view as much as anything. Imagine that though with a full set of your Takaras. Yeah, It'd look brilliant, wouldn't it? It would, but then again, that's that's odd because the the cards are the Kenner design, aren't they? The racetrack on the cards is is the traditional design, whilst the box is the is the Zeddy type of stuff you, you almost it almost deserves a different a different item I mean, in fact actually the zetka cards would look much better in there i think or the uh, yeah or the rocket fire well you could put whatever you want in there andy Sometimes. well yeah i would that, in fact yeah if i had because not having any takara 12 backs if i had won that i would have put something in there completely different andy and the other andy the p Two things that I had uh, found. One is a board game. Now, Takara did do a few board games. I think they had the same ones that Kenner did, but obviously with uh, a little Japanese twist. But um, there's a little mini board game, which is lovely. And it's the packaging that I really like about this one, as with so much of this Japanese stuff. Now, typical Star Wars, you imagine the packaging to be black. This one is mostly white packaging, but it's got a lot of the uh, elements from the traditional Kenner packaging that we know and love. So it's got the racetrack with a Star Wars logo um, joining into it. But rather than being the silver on black, we've got uh, the word star is in bright blue and the word wars is in bright purple. And then you've got a blue and purple racetrack going around the outside of this box. Across the bottom of the box in a diagonal fashion, you've got two green lines, a dark green and a light green, and a picture of the board game below it. Lots of Japanese text. It's just a really nice looking, really odd looking box. And I've got no idea what the board game is. It looks as if it's one where you, you sort of move your counters around a path and you, know, you perhaps you go forward three squares and back two squares, depending where you land. There's various cards, there's counters. But uh, as I say, I've not seen one that is out of the box and certainly never, never had one in hand. So it was the box art that really appealed to me there. The other one that I spotted, and I love this item, I'd love to have one of these, is an inflatable R2-D2 key ring. <laughs> how, what does anyone need with an inflatable key ring? How bonkers is that? It's just brilliant. <laughs> Judging by the size of the key ring, I mean, a key ring is about, what, centimetre and a half, something like that. So uh, uh, the R2 must be about eight or ten centimetres tall when it is fully inflated. Lovely little depiction of R2. I mean, it looks a bit like the action figure, doesn't it? I don't know whether it's been based on the action figure. But, uh, yeah, uh, just a typical bonkers Japanese thing. An That's inflatable smart. keyring. Who else would think of that? Got it. I've worked out why you need an inflatable R2-D2 keyring. Why? If you're going out boating. Yes. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to lose your keys. 
That's not a bad you put, shout. You put them on your inflatable R2-D2 key ring and it falls in and your keys bob along the surface and you collect them again. They do not sink to the bottom of the boating lake. And to, you know, not being racist or anything, um, but there's probably more people who are using boats in Japan. You have them, yeah, you know, there's a lot, a lot of, obviously they're at little islands, so there's probably more likelihood you are going to have a need for that sort of thing. So yeah, that's fair play to there them. They we got are. That yeah, there we go. A pra- practical as well as beautiful. There we that, are. <laughs> that, that's the Japanese uh, design, I think. Right, so just finally, there was a there was a bot bag and a beach ball, uh, which are again completely random. But for some bizarre reason, three PO's got a rather menacing looking handgun. <laughs> Don't know why. He just needs one. You know, they obviously were thinking about this. You know, three PO's looking a bit too mild and friendly. Give him a gun. Give him a gun. He can shoot people with it. I think that's where we're finished, guys. That was a cracking little round. I love Takara. I love Japanese items especially when they use imagination and go for it didn't cover everything we've covered things in the past like the sort of the version of the npc kits don't go for that again wasn't worth it uh you can go back and listen to those but yeah just a cracking little range if you've got any of this stuff and you think you know we should have mentioned this i've got this crazy item or there is something we've missed let us know send us uh or maybe send us pictures of your collection uh, i'd love to see what people have got out there of of Takara or other Japanese items which we will come to other licensees in the future so uh, thank you very much and we'll do another one next month brilliant hello there you may remember me from the Empire Strikes Back now don't forget to hit subscribe and also click the bell for notifications.